In April of 2022, a 38-year-old man died in his apartment due to an apparent medical condition. Without seeing the scene of his death, his parents had him cremated, fully believing the ruling. But later, when his ex-girlfriend entered the apartment to a horrific, bloody mess, his friends and family began to doubt the cause of his death. And after seeing damning security footage and audio from his neighbor, they knew he had been murdered. This is the story of Johnny Cashman. John Hutchinson Cashman Jr. was born on January 9th, 1984 to Kim Cashman and John Hutchinson Cashman Sr. And then he also had a sister named Sarah. The family lived in the Bangor area of Maine, which is a little over an hour northeast from the capital city of Augusta and only about two hours from the Canadian border. Now, we cannot stress how little information there was about Johnny's personal life or his family, so everything we were able to glean was from their social media profiles and obituaries of like family members and articles from local papers in Maine from years past, but we did our best. And this may be due to Johnny's complicated criminal history and the family may want to maintain his status as a victim in this scenario, which of course he was, instead of allowing the public to believe that he was in some way responsible due to his infractions from the past. Now, Johnny had been in trouble with law enforcement, most of them having to do with being intoxicated, facing charges from driving under the influence to disorderly conduct to domestic violence assault, and he had served jail time on multiple occasions. Johnny had some mental and physical health struggles that he was navigating on a daily basis as well. For example, he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder for which he took medication and suffered from anxiety and depression. He was also known to have a bit of an addictive personality and dependency issues, and he was a frequent drinker, with some reports even going so far as to say he was an alcoholic. He also suffered from hypertension or high blood pressure, and because of all this, he visited the doctor quite frequently for preemptive care. But despite these health issues, at the time of his death, Johnny seemed to be in good health, which is important to note as you guys will learn. So he sought medical examinations in December of 2021 and January of 2022. Now, the case we're talking about today happens in April of 2022, so just a short few months after his last examination. And both of these exams came back normal. There was nothing out of the ordinary or that he was not already being treated for. But it was not known why he sought two examinations back to, or back to back, you know, and they were only about a month apart, though it's possible that because he had various health issues over the years, he was just being cautious if something came up. So while the rest of his family stayed put in Maine, Johnny eventually relocated to Lynchburg, Virginia for a fresh start. Now, Lynchburg, more than 800 miles or over a thousand kilometers from his hometown of Bangor, is the center of the state of Virginia and has a population of about 80,000 people. He found an apartment on Kemper Street located in downtown Lynchburg, just blocks from the James River, which cuts through the city. The building hosts 15 loft style units in what, you know, looks like from the outside, like a warehouse. Right. So that's not, it's not super big. 15 apartments, not huge. Yeah. So on Thursday, April 14th, 2022, 38-year-old Johnny Cashman returned home to his apartment at 3.03 p.m. Now, he was seen on security camera footage ascending the narrow wooden staircase wearing a black t-shirt, red tennis shoes, jeans, and a camouflage Lakers hat. Slung on his back was a red backpack with a jacket hanging over it and he had been holding a glass cup that appeared to be full of liquid at the time. Some actually wonder if he had been drinking that afternoon because he had kind of been swaying when he was walking up the stairs to his apartment, which was apartment number 67, but this is still pretty unclear. Yeah, you guys can see, we're going to post it. He It looks like he's kind of um, crossing his legs a little bit, like step after step. 
Um, and so th- I think that's what people mean is he's kind of shifting his body a lot, not walking very straight. You yeah, know? but that's also kind of sometimes what it looks like when people walk upstairs. Yeah, so and he was looking down. So it's like it, that happens. But also it's not very relevant to me if he was drinking, but it, it might come into play later. So it's just worth mentioning. So Johnny entered the door code to his apartment, walked inside the house completely by himself and shut the door behind him. What happened inside in the minutes that followed is still a disturbing mystery and may always be. His family said with certainty based on his physicality that they do believe that it was him in the video and not someone impersonating him, which is an important detail to be able to establish the timeline of his death. Almost immediately after Johnny returned home, approximately one minute, the surveillance camera footage picked up what sounded like a struggle inside of his apartment. Johnny, who at the time had a friend from out of town staying with him for a few days, can be heard on the footage, but the other person is barely audible, making what you hear even more eerie. So we're going to play that audio now, and then we're going to read a transcript to kind of clear up any audio issues since the camera is picking up the audio from outside of his front door, so it's not too loud, but you can hear what's going on. So here's the clip. Oh, dude, what the fuck? Stop, what are you doing? Yo, what the fuck, dude? So shortly after Johnny closes the door behind him, like he said, it's it's pretty much exactly one minute. It's like 60 or 61 seconds later. He can be heard yelling, oh, dude, what the fuck? Fuck, bro, what are you doing? Then some kind of like thud that sounds like something being dropped on the floor or perhaps Johnny getting pushed to the floor. That can be heard. And then comes a muffled, stop it. And then, yo, what the fuck, dude? Then another thud and clatter that sounded something like maybe glass or metal hitting the wooden floor. Then, what are you doing, man? Then the sound of two loud clicks that sound almost like maybe heavy dishes in the sink rubbing against each other, but it's very unclear. Then you hear Johnny say, stop it. And then a very disturbing moment of silence. Then another pleading from Johnny, stop, please. Then there's garbled talking that sounds like maybe Johnny was saying, what are you doing? And perhaps the person that he was speaking to was talking very quietly back to him. Then Johnny started to sound more desperate at this point, yelling, what are you doing, man? Stop, stop it. Then there's silence and a few more soft thuds. And then once again, you hear, stop, stop. And at this point, Johnny sounds very out of breath and says, what are you doing, man? And then after that, it was silent. So after this, at 3.11 p.m., a man who is not Johnny exits the apartment by himself. Remember, Johnny walked in alone, which means whoever this is was already inside his apartment. Yeah, and we obviously know that it's not Johnny because there's no way he was going to change his clothes that quickly. And it doesn't even look like him anyway. It doesn't. We're going to get into that. This is absolutely not him. So also to remind you, Johnny had gotten home at 3.03 p.m., which means this entire exchange from Johnny getting home Um, you know, a minute passing before anything starts to happen, this whole struggle, you know, whatever happened in that confrontation to this mysterious man leaving took just eight minutes. Now, the man appeared to be around Johnny's age. He was a white man of average height and build. He's wearing like khaki pants or they kind of also look like brown jeans. I, I don't know which one. He's also wearing a black leather jacket. And like Johnny, he had been wearing a black t-shirt. So here's what happens. It's We're going to post the video. It's You guys should definitely watch it. It's very unsettling. So the man closes the door behind him and descends down the narrow staircase that Johnny had walked up just minutes earlier. Eerily, 
He briefly pauses at the bottom of the stairs before turning around swiftly and climbing them again and either wiping down the door handle with the sleeve of his jacket or making sure that he closed the door all the way so it was locked. It kind of appears that he's doing both. At first, I thought it was just the wiping of the doorknob, and then I'm like, wait, it kind of looks like he's jiggling on it to make sure it closed. So it's unclear there. It looks like both. But what you see in the video makes you think that he's trying to possibly cover up fingerprints. And then at this point, as also I wanted to say, as he made his way back up the stairs before touching the doorknob again, his face is exposed. Like he's he's looking down a bit at his feet like Johnny was when he came up, but he's not trying to conceal his face or his face from the camera. And again, it's daylight. You can fully see this man. Yeah, and possibly he doesn't even know that the camera is actually there. It I wish I wish we knew. Because it doesn't look like he ever looks directly at the camera, so maybe he doesn't realize it's there. So as he's walking back down, he flattens his already popped collar of his leather jacket. So he just pushes it down and then he descends the staircase a second time. Now he pauses at the second to last step for a second and rubs his face and his hair with both of his hands before continuing to walk down to the hallway and exiting to the left. It kind of almost looks like he's um, at the very last moment that you see him. He's like putting his arms over his head. It looks like he's maybe trying to like take his jacket off or something, but we're not sure. And then he's off camera. Now, within one minute of leaving Johnny's apartment at 3.12 p.m., after the leather jacket clad mystery man exits the building, like after the door clicks closed, Johnny can be heard on the audio of the security camera yelling for help. And then there's um, a pound and then a low moaning cry of help multiple times. I'm going to play that right now. It's just a few seconds, just so you guys can hear this as well. Starting with the click of the outside door as the man leaves. So Johnny had last made contact with his family on Wednesday, April 13th, 2022. The day before whatever happened to Johnny inside of his apartment that day, although a few reports claim that he had actually spoken to his mom on the day of his death. Johnny's mom and sister have said that they spoke with Johnny daily, so when five days passed and they hadn't heard from him, the whole family grew concerned. On April 18th, 2022, five days after Johnny's family had last spoken to him, and four days since he had last been seen on the security camera footage outside of his apartment, his sister Sarah called the Lynchburg Police Department and requested a welfare check. The following morning, April 19th, at 6.42 a.m., the police knocked and announced themselves, but received no answer. They knocked again a minute later and still received no response, and also did not hear any activity coming from inside that indicated that Johnny was home. About an hour and a half later at 8.01 a.m., Police knocked one more time and still heard nothing in response, so this time they entered the home. Now immediately, they came upon Johnny's lifeless body lying in the hallway by the front door. He was lying face up on the floor, still wearing the same outfit as the last time he had been seen on that security camera footage, and he was covered in blood. It was clear that he had been dead for days. The medical examiner took him in immediately, and an inspection of his body was completed just two hours later. The inspection stated that Johnny was found unresponsive, and then it says, quote, supine on the floor in the hallway, and supine is the position of lying horizontally and facing up. So he's like, his body was laying straight up. The only drug found at the scene was a pack of cigarettes. And under both case facts and circumstances surrounding death, the responding officer, listed on the report as investigator Tyler Miller, wrote, quote, Found obviously deceased at home by law enforcement officers upon welfare check. Blood with fecal matter mixed in found around home. Likely gastrointestinal bleed per investigators. No trauma, no drugs, nothing suspicious. Identification okay. History, 
hypertension, bad liver, tobacco use. Seen at Johnson Health Center for care per prescription monitoring program, meaning that they were monitoring or monitoring him for drug use, uh, knowing that he struggled with addiction. Now, according to law enforcement, they conducted a thorough search of the apartment and were able to rule out foul play. Oh, God, this just frustrates me. I know. The only items seized from the apartment for further testing were Johnny's white iPhone and six sample swabs from around the apartment. That same morning, they contacted Johnny's family back in Maine to let them know the tragic news and inform them that they believe that he died of complications from a medical condition. Now, before his family even saw the aftermath of Johnny's death, i.e. all the blood left behind in his apartment. Police initially told Johnny's mom that they thought he died of a heart attack. But ultimately, police and the medical examiner surmised from the presence of blood mixed with fecal matter found at the scene that it was an unspecified medical condition. But that was apparently the extent of the explanation. Like, what does that even mean? Look. (laughs) An unexplained medical condition. They have no fucking idea. I agree. And I also just want to say, as we talk about this case, there's probably people listening right now that are in the medical field and maybe people who have seen cases of like vomiting excessive amounts of blood. We're going to touch on that later. So it's just, it's shocking to me that so quickly they chalk this up to a medical condition. And I do also want to say because it feels important to share for the first time we are going to share photos on our socials of his apartment like for the first time we're sharing photos of blood and a crime scene which we never do but to understand how much blood was throughout his whole apartment which is incredibly important we will post them so johnny's family remembers asking the lynchburg police department point blank if there were any signs of foul play to which they were informed that there were not Police also informed them that because it was such an open and shut case, they did not feel it warranted an autopsy. This would be a huge issue later, especially considering or considering the investigator had said there was no trauma, which really didn't appear to be the case based on the audio from the video. And also based on just the crime scene. Very true. Now, according to Johnny's sister, Sarah, the family wasn't even given the option of having an autopsy. And they, of course, would have done so, because the fact that he was just suddenly dead was such a mystery to them. The family were understandably devastated, but there was one silver lining. Investigators stated that they were certain that he did not suffer, and that he had passed away instantly from his ailment. I just don't know how you come to that conclusion. Yeah, I don't understand that either. Especially with all the blood, like all over his apartment, even if you're saying that he did die from a medical condition and he was vomiting blood everywhere, you're telling me he didn't suffer while that was happening? That sounds like suffering, yeah. Yeah. So wanting to give him a proper send-off back in Maine, Johnny's family had him cremated and brought home to them. The apartment sat empty while Johnny's family tried to make sense of his sudden death. But on April 29th, 2022, Johnny's ex-girlfriend requested access to the apartment to retrieve some items that she had left there. She and her mom stopped by to pick up her things, but were completely unprepared for what they found. The women walked into the most shocking scene that they had ever come across, which Johnny's ex-girlfriend photographed so that she could show Johnny's family, blissfully unaware hundreds of miles away, that something had gone terribly wrong in Johnny's final moments alive. <laughs> 